Hello, I'm Lyric Kennard. Welcome back to class. In the last lesson, I showed you how to use fabrics that quilters don't normally use. Silks, velvets, those lovely, soft, slippery things that are sometimes too difficult to work with in a quilt. We talked about how to use those fabrics, make them easier to piece, and we laid out our pieces to make a silk scarf with. Now, let's head over to the machine and I'll show you how to sew them. Here we are ready to sew. I've used silk pins every few inches in my cloth. They're very necessary, don't skip that step. I am using a 7010 needle in my machine. Go ahead and use Microtex or silk needles as long as it's very narrow and small. I'm using a walking foot in my machine. What it does is grabs the fabric from the top at the same rate the feed dogs are pulling from underneath. If you're working with slippery fabrics, anything you can do to help those fabrics stay together is a good thing. The last trick I'd like you to use is using a mouse or a rat. See all those tails hanging off? That's why we call it a mouse or a rat and start every stitch on your mouse. Sew a little bit and then tuck in your cloth. What this does is allows you to hold taut from the back and the front from the very beginning of that seam. It's wonderful to have all your fabric starched and stiff and nice, but every little tip helps it turn out even better. At the end of each seam, I'll cut off my mouse, and if it needs it, I'll trim up my edges. And then I'll go back and zigzag the edges Let's get that zigzag going. Zigzag the edges. Come back here. Silk frays a little bit, and you just want to give it every opportunity to behave nicely. If you have a serger, this would be the perfect time to use it, and you wouldn't have to do this in two steps. After I'm through with each seam, I will take it to my ironing board, lay it out on that towel again, especially when you're working with velvets, press it flat, and then press to the dark side. Or in this case, the side that is less sheer than the other side. Velvet is notoriously difficult to work with. A couple tricks. Loosen up the pressure on your foot so it doesn't press down quite so hard. The velvet, that wonderfully soft nap that is so worth it, I promise, also makes it squish and move around. I find it easiest to have non-velvet on the bottom and the velvet on the top. And remember, hold your pieces very nice and taut as you're sewing to hold the layers together. I've gone ahead and sewn down the long seam on the outer edge. Remember, my center seam wasn't in the center. It was a little bit off to the side. If you put your fold line and those seams directly in the center, you'll have two edges with sewn seams. In that case, you can choose to sew one end flat exactly like this, or do as I think I'm going to do, and open it up and offset it so that my seams actually go down the middle of the scarf. All right, I've sewn up one edge entirely. The other edge I only sewed up halfway so that I can reach my hand in there all the way to the other end. I tuck the corner in. 
find the other corner, tuck it in, and then hold those with my inside hand and pull the rest of the scarf off until all those beautiful colors come through. And then on the other side, tuck the sewn corner, and then I'm going to take this to my iron and iron it like so to make it easier to sew up the gap by hand. Now it's time to sew up our opening. I've taken the smallest needle that I'm comfortable with. This is just an applique needle. You use whatever you'd like. And I'm going to make a messy little knot in the end. I lick my fingers, take the two ends. My thread is doubled because it's very thin. I'm wrapping them around my finger so that the end overlaps and then rolling it off the top so it twists and then holding that loop while I pull it and it makes not a very pretty knot but it will work. I'm going to work that needle up from the inside to the edge of that seam that I've pressed. tuck my tail down inside and then this is not a difficult stitch. From one side straight across to the other seam. Dig your needle into that edge underneath the fabric just on one side. Got to make sure you don't get any loops in there. And then from here hop straight across to the other edge and on that seam, on that ironed seam, tuck your needle in, bring it out, and then do the same thing. So you hop across each time you pull out your needle, and each time you tuck the needle in, you're going across to the opposite edge. So it's kind of in, over, up, over, down, over, up. It's a very simple closure that will hide all of your thread. Now I'm using a neutral gray. If your fabrics are all dark, go ahead and use a dark thread. I had very light and very dark cloth and some of it was sheer so if I used a light cloth it might show through on the blue side and if I used I meant thread if I used the light thread if I used a dark thread a dark blue it might have shown through on some of the peachy parts so I just opted for a neutral gray All right do you have an idea of how to do that stitch as you come to the end of your scarf, the end of that gap, it will be time to make a knot. I like to tug my thread a little tight and then pull the cloth out and bury those threads. Now to close the end, I take a little tiny bite of the fabric and leave the needle right there and then wrap once, twice around the needle hold it with my finger and pull it through and I've got a knot in the cloth right there now right where that knot comes out tuck your needle in bring it out anywhere down and holding on to that edge give it a little tug tug that need that thread and the knot buries itself now you can snip the tail and let's take a look at this. Well, there you have it. We have pieced together these slippery but deliciously wonderful silks and velvets into a scarf. And you can leave it there. It's beautiful as it is. Or you can join me in the next lesson and learn how to go from elegant and wonderful to 
truly spectacular with this lovely beaded fridge. It's not hard to do, I promise. I invite you to look at my website, lyrickkinard.com, and see what I have to offer there. It's been fun! <laughs>